You know, there's always been racism in the world, um, and there always will be. Contrary to the convenient, ad hoc, arbitrary definition the left gives the word today, racism is simply the hatred toward or resentment of another group of people based on their skin color. Racism is its not a single word somebody says. It's not a joke they make. Racism also is not dependent on power structures or systems or institutions. Any old schlub can be a racist. And the racism of the least powerful is no more justified than the racism of the most powerful. Racism is not the exclusive domain of domain of one race or another. No race has a monopoly on racism, either as victim or perpetrator. And racism is not necessarily a crisis. Because if somebody is racist and their racism is largely rejected by the society they live in, then there's not a whole lot of harm that his racist thoughts can do. His racism is likely to remain mostly in his thoughts because it's not accepted by society where it damages him more than it damages anybody else. Where racism becomes truly dangerous is where it's accepted by the culture. Racism that society embraces, even celebrates, is the kind, it's the only kind, that can cause widespread harm. It's the only kind that we really have to worry about. But given that society accepts this kind of racism, most people in society are not worried about it, which means always that the kind of racism everyone should worry about is by definition exactly the kind that they're not worrying about. And in our culture, of course, that is anti-white racism. It it, it is only in a country that embraces and celebrates anti-white racism that something like this can exist. According to the film website Collider, filmmaker Sasha Jenkins has teamed up with Showtime to shine a light on institutionalized and systemic racism in a new docu-series titled Everything's Gonna Be All White. In the series trailer, viewers hear from multiple people of color speaking about their experiences with racism and the negative impact of whiteness in America. Set to debut debut on February 11th, the three-part limited series will feature interviews with historians, artists, activists, cultural commentators, actors, and more. In a trailer that gives a may-trigger white people disclaimer at its start, several interviewees provide their commentary on everything from white fragility to the capital rise of January 2021. Through facts, historical events, and even some comedy, the trailer focuses its lens on the problematic systems that are in place to hold people of color down while elevating Caucasians. Well, this sounds bad already. You don't know the half of it. The trailer uh, for this thing came out a few days ago, and it is maybe the most unabashedly, gleefully racist thing you'll ever watch in your life. Take a look. most about white people is when they pretend like they're the victim. (laughs) What's also annoying is when they, you know, when they kill us. We'll just stop there for a second to note that it is, it is certainly annoying to be killed. I I agree with you there, but it's uh, very rare that a white person kills a black person. It's also comparatively rare that a black person kills a white person. White people tend to kill white people and black people tend to kill black people. Black people make up a hugely disproportionate number of murder victims, but they're almost all killed by other black people. And as for interracial murder, which again is rare, more whites are killed by black people than black people by white people. Those are the facts, in case they matter to you. Back to the trailer. What is fragile about whiteness when everything has been constructed around it? Every part of who I am has been distorted or criminalized. It's really just a bunch of... White lies. (laughs) You know, fragility is an interesting concept. Let me ask you this. When white people are are told that there's a certain word they can't say in any context, that they can't even utter the syllables, no matter the reason or intention, because of the harm that word will do to members of of another race, where is the fragility there? Who's being fragile? When a black NFL coach cries that he's being oppressed because it took him more than three hours to find a new coaching job, is that fragility? See, as it turns out, there's quite a lot of fragility in our culture, but but it's not that one race or another is fragile. There is, in fact, plenty of fragility among white people, too. it's It's that fragility is cultivated among members of victim classes. They are treated as fragile, encouraged to be fragile. Encouraged to be helpless, to be victims. That's where the fragility is. Well, uh, one thing I can tell you as a four-star chef myself, um, amateur chef, but I consider myself a four-star chef, your, your kitchen is not complete without great 
kitchen knives. And that's why you need Kamikoto. Kamikoto taps into more than 800 years of traditional techniques from Honshu, Japan. Kamikoto also uses steel sourced from mills in Japan, and each blade is crafted using techniques that have been honed and perfected by generations of knife smiths. Each knife comes in a beautiful, heavy-duty ash wood box. It makes sure that the knife is stored safely as well. Each Kamikoto knife goes through a rigorous 19-step process that takes several years from start to finish to complete. Our expert bladesmiths forge and shape raw steel into hardy blades, uh, polishing and sharpening them to an excruciatingly fine edge. Each knife is individually inspected. Kamikoto is so confident that their knives will work for you that each knife comes with a lifetime guarantee. Because of their single bevel edge, Kamikoto knives can achieve an unbelievably sharp edge you just can't get with other knives. They can cut through your ribeye like butter. That is guaranteed. Uh, Kamikoto is currently having a massive extended New Year sale, and on top of that sale, you can get an additional $50, $50 off any purchase you make with discount code Matt Walsh. So click the link below or go to kamikoto.com slash Matt Walsh and use promo code Matt Walsh to save an extra $50 today. All right, let's go back to the trailer. You're storming the Capitol! You're not patriots. You're ridiculous. One of the definitions of American whiteness is ignorance. White people, we are not your problem. You are. Should white people today feel any responsibility for slavery? <laughs> Hell yeah. White Jesus or black Jesus? Jesus was not white. Think of geography. Ain't no way Jesus walked around with blonde hair and blue eyes. White culture fears the end of the world. For us as native people, the end of the world already happened like multiple times. Symbols and monuments, these are mementos of racism. Bring that statue that. What about TCBY yogurt or something? Everybody can get behind. <laughs> the truth has to be told about history. We have to make sure that these stories are told from our perspective. All right. Uh, I think it's probably about enough of that. You know, I often hear just on this on this uh, Jesus white Jesus thing. I, I I often hear it insisted that Jesus isn't white, um, but the interesting thing is I never hear anyone insisting that he is white. So race hustlers love to go on and on about the fact that Jesus didn't have blonde hair and blue eyes, which is a bit like me running around telling everybody that George Washington wasn't a black guy from Nigeria. It's true, of course, that George Washington wasn't African. But by debunking that idea, I'm debunking something that I made up in my head in the first place. In a similar way, nobody ever said that Jesus looked like he's from Sweden. Now, you might see Jesus depicted with lighter skin in some art, but that's because nobody knows what Jesus looked like. And so his physical depictions, which are all essentially fictional, because there's no portrait provided to us in the Bible, so people are kind of making it up, and that means his physical depictions are going to reflect the people who create the depiction. Black artists will probably tend to make Jesus look a little bit blacker, while white artists may tend to make him look a little bit whiter. Now, Jesus, I can assure you, is not offended by any of this. In fact, Jesus doesn't really care if we get his physical description exactly right. And I feel comfortable speaking for Jesus on this point. And I know that he doesn't care because if he did, he would have provided us with that description instead of leaving it so conspicuously absent from the record. And so what that means is that people, again, sort of make it up. And as artists, it's going to reflect their, you know, it's, it's going to reflect themselves in a certain way. That's fine. Not a problem. Now, you notice at the end of the clip, we're told that the stories of history, including the gospel story, I guess, must be told from our perspective, meaning the non-white perspective. Of course, anyone who tells a story is going to be tell it, telling it from their own perspective. Nobody is suggesting that black people shouldn't have a perspective or they shouldn't tell stories grounded in that perspective. But what he really means, what this documentary, along with critical race theory as a whole, is trying to get across, is that the stories of history and the story of America and the story of our culture, both past and present, present must be told from a perspective that is actively antagonistic towards white people. That's what's really meant. Now think about this. Is there any country in the non-Western world where the culture is openly antagonistic to the nation's predominant race? Could, could something analogous to, to what I just played for you exist in any non-Western country? You know, something like that targeting the majority of the people in the country on racial grounds? 
Could there be any serious movement anywhere else to shame and demonize and exclude and marginalize the majority race in the country? Has anything like this ever existed anywhere in history? I think not. And it's gotten to this point now through years of conditioning. Not only the conditioning of non-white groups to hate white people and blame them for every problem, even and especially the problems that members of these other groups largely cause through their own choices. But on top of that, there has to have been a long and sustained effort to condition white people to hate themselves, hate who they are, loathe their own identity. It's probably not a coincidence that this is all happening at the same time that gender ideology takes hold, because all of this comes down to a hatred and rejection of yourself. That's the only way that any of this stuff can happen. That's how we end up with that. The most ridiculously racist thing put on film in decades, easily. And you can watch it on Showtime this week, which is why today we must say that Showtime is canceled. Listen, hit that subscribe button right now. Do it right now. I thank you for your compliance. It is somewhat appreciated.